Are you tired of dumping your tools all over the place when you rotate your flip top cart over? Uh oh. Then this tool storage solution might be for you. What's up everyone, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Today I'm going to show you how I built this storage solution for my oscillating spindle sander. I'm also going to cover how I got the measurements, so if you're using a different sander or your cabinet is a different height, you can still build one. Oh, and a big thank you to Lee from Regal Street for helping me with that intro. I'll put some links to his YouTube and Instagram in the description. He's a really good follow, so make sure you check him out. All right, so the first thing I had to do was make this base. And in my case, this is 16 by 17 and a half inches. And I just rounded out the front. Uh, the real important measurement though, is that it should be a total of four inches tall. So I cut these strips to three and a quarter inch, and then it's got a three quarter inch piece of plywood on top. I also cut a couple of these strips here. These are one and a half inches wide. Uh, this is just melanine coated plywood. If you don't have this, you don't have to use it. These are gonna be for the arms, and I figured that melanine would just offer a little bit of wear resistance. The next thing I need to do is make this little pull-out shelf here. So to get the measurement of the width of these shelves, we're gonna take the width of our base and add in the thickness of each of these arms here. So we've got about 17 and 9 sixteenths. And next I need to figure out the height of this shelf. And we're going to get that measurement by measuring from the top of our cabinet here, the top of the opening, to the top of our piece of equipment. So I've got about seven and three eighths of an inch. And I'm actually just gonna subtract that three eighths of an inch so that I have a little bit of clearance. So the top of this shelf is going to be seven inches from the bottom of this one here. And then this measurement here, we're just going to add three inches on. So we've got a total of 10 inches for these side panels. These panels here are 17 and 9 16 And then the depth is just going to be the total depth of our cabinet minus maybe a half inch or so. So the total depth of my cabinet is 23 and a half inches. So I'm just going to make these panels 23 inches long. So here's my finished drawer box and you'll notice that this space is a little too wide. So what I've done is put one of my drawer slides on that side, 
I'll put one on this side here and I've made a wall that's got some pocket holes in it and that's just going to slide in here. And I'll be able to screw this in place. Of course, I'll measure the top so it matches the bottom, but then this will be perfectly set up for the right space that I need for my drawer slides. Drawer slides are pretty easy to install. What I'm gonna do is slide them apart and you'll see this little tab that you can pull and that'll separate the part that attaches to the drawer from the part that's gonna attach to the wall. And I'm just spacing it up about a quarter of an inch. And what I'm gonna do is line this front edge up right with the front edge of this wall here. And we're actually gonna use two per side. So take this one apart. I have this spacer that's two inches. And what that's gonna do is let me put this other drawer slide up here and it'll make sure that it's perfectly parallel to the one below it. we can just slide in the part that's going to attach to the drawer. I'm just going to slide these out a little bit so that I have access to them. And I've got my quarter inch spacers in here still. Now this might be a tight fit. I just want it pushed down all the way against those spacers on the bottom. So now I've got my drawer slides pulled out a little bit and I have access to these holes so I can start attaching these to my drawer. Now that I've got two screws on each drawer slide, I can test it out, make sure that they slide nice, and then I need to remove them to finish installing the rest of the screws. All right, now that I've verified that the drawers slide out nice and that I've got plenty of clearance up here, the last thing I need to do is figure out how long I need to make those arms. And I want the top of this table to sit just above the top of my workbench so that if I had a longer piece that I was trying to sand, it wouldn't hit this. Looks like about nine and a half inches ought to do it. I just wanna make sure that I'm being perfectly clear with the measurements on this. So we had measured nine and a half, and what we need to do is add the width of this to that measurement. So these are one and a half inches wide, so that'll give us 11. And the reason that we're doing that is because I'm gonna radius the ends of these, and then that bolt hole will sit right in the middle of this radius. And then same at the other end, so here's 
11 inches. Put the radius on here. And put that bolt hole right in the middle. And now if we measure those two dots, that gives us nine and a half. So it's nine and a half inches from our bolt holes, not the total length. All right, this thing's working great. There's just a couple things that I wanna mention though. The arms, you can probably err towards the long side on those. So I measured about nine and a half and that's what I made it between centers. I probably would have been okay going with 10. This is still above the tabletop, but it's pretty close. Uh, the other option is if you got into this same situation as me, you could just put like some spacers under here to lift the whole machine up. The other thing is, you may have noticed that it pulls forward when you're sanding on this side of the drum. It wants to push the machine this way. You can come up with something that'll lock it to the bench. Maybe that's something that I'll do eventually. You could probably use something like a bungee cord. I'm not super worried about it right now. That may be something I do one day, but even when it is out in this position, it's still pretty stable. And I'm sure there'll be some concerns about the strength of the arms themselves. They're actually really rigid. So I'm not really worried about them at all. And like I said, when it's pushed up against here, it's really locked in good. So I'm not afraid that it's gonna go anywhere. And hopefully you noticed that I added these little stops here. That just keeps the machine from over traveling when you pull it out. I hope this video was helpful to you or at least inspired you to do something. Uh, I think this is a really great setup and I'm probably gonna do something similar down in the rest of the cabinets. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. It also really helps me out if you guys just leave a comment or you like the video and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. And until next time, I'll see everyone over on one of these other videos.